Hello, everyone, and welcome to another CCI monthly video update, highlighting the great work of schools and school districts around Indiana and school counselors, too, all who have received a comprehensive counseling initiative grant from Lilly Endowment. Today, our guest is Gail Shriver. She's school counselor with North White Middle High School in Monon, Indiana. Gail, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We've done a couple of these video updates with schools and school corporations receiving a CCI grant, but I don't think we've done one with a collaborative, or at least not too many. So tell me again, how many schools are in your collaborative and how that work is going, both what has been a positive and maybe what has been a challenge with that work. With our collaborative, we have our four county schools and we all kind of differ in size. Three of us are about the same size and then Twin Lakes High School is larger than us. But we meet monthly as a group of counselors and we are very supportive of each other. We found out early on that when we did our meetings, we had K through 12 in the same kind of discussion and that didn't go very well, obviously, because developmentally things were a lot different. Um, we still do that for the most part, but sometimes we'll have little breakouts. It has been phenomenal. Um, I always knew the counselors in the neighboring corporations, but we didn't lean on each other like we do now. And so we have phone numbers, you know, I'm talking with them on the weekends about different things. So it's truly been a blessing. It's been one of the great things that has come out of the Lilly grant for us. That's exciting to hear. I know I read ahead on some of the pluses and one of them was a story about locker races. Can you share that? That came out of your collaborative? Yes, I have um, a high rate of free and reduced lunches uh, at my a poverty rate at my school. And I've always had difficulty trying to get students to come to freshman orientation. So at one of our meetings, we talked about what's working for everybody else. And one of the schools shared that they did locker races. So students come there they get to pick their locker that night. If you don't, then you're just assigned one. So normally I would say our percentages were around 30% for attendance. And I think we were close to 70% this year because we did locker races. It went very well, the kids enjoyed it. It was, it was really good. Wonderful, that's great. Yeah. Now, one of the things that is also a plus, I think, is that is some of the work you've done in collaboration with other community groups in, in the area. One of them is Four County, which is your mental health provider. Talk about the case managers that are in your schools now. We have been blessed, in my opinion, with two case managers all the time. We've had some changeover, but we've still been blessed to have some really good case managers. I think what works for us is we treat them more as equals rather than outsiders, and we work very well together. We've had a lot of success with students. I have a couple of kids who lost their father but they didn't have really any other family. They have kind of stepped in and are, have helped facilitate a lot of things that I couldn't do by myself, a lot of the community agencies and different things like that. So more of that wraparound service. And then we've reached out and added additional. They have their own wraparound service, but we've added to that and they've helped facilitate that. And, you know, like this year I've had an uptick with students with an anxious behaviors and things sure. like that. It's, yeah. it's been a godsend. You know, we tag team. If I'm not available, they do it or vice versa. So it's been really helpful. Are they still able to provide services or are you all back in class or do you have some virtual or hybrid situations? We, we do allow students to be virtual, but most of our kids are face to face. Okay. Um, the only drawback with that program is it's a need based program. So some students don't qualify for the school based case management, but it's been extremely helpful for those that do. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the issue, isn't it? Who qualifies for always insurance is. and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You, as I understand it, are implementing, along with the collaborative, the Ask a National Model. Tell us how, how that's going. And I know it was really beneficial. Last year, you said your elementary counselor was able to take almost all of the non-counseling duties off, off his or her plate. But there's kind of a second part to that story. Can you tell us more? At the elementary level, they were able to, in my understanding, all of the non, you know, non-counseling type or non-programming type uh, duties off of her plate. She was in the classes. She was doing a lot more face-to-face -face group, different things like that. She retired at the end of the year, and unfortunately, they did not rehire mm. in that position. So we're in the process of having discussions, and hopefully, 
that is going to be something that's going to be coming in the future because I worry about the needs at the elementary school. Oh. So they had worked so hard to get to that point, and now there's nobody. So, Certainly. I, yeah. Do you think the implementation or the process of implementing the national model was helpful, at least initially? Yes, there, there have been a lot of things that helped. Um, you know, one of the things that is a blessing and a curse for me is tracking my time. I use the time task log and it takes time to do it, but it does keep you centered and grounded and focused in a, in a way that you kind of look at it. And if you don't take the time to do that, you can find yourself wasting time or doing things. So that's been real helpful. When we do our um, programming and planning, doing that calendar has been incredibly helpful. When I can show people data, one of the things I did last year is we implemented a retention policy at the middle school. And so I had a group of kids that were on track to basically be retained. And I did group lessons prior to COVID. And prior to COVID and, and going remote learning, those kids, all of them would have made the criteria to move on to ninth grade. I was able to show that data to the school board. I was able to show it to our advisory council. Um, it was beneficial. And I just did a fall kind of a virtual type advisory council meeting and shared with them about the elementary position. And there were quite a few of them that were already starting to ask questions and even say, you know, what, what can we do? So that was nice to have that kind of support. Yeah. Little victories along the way. Yes. Yeah. That uh, collecting data, especially the time task logs, <laughs> it's a love hate relationship, isn't it? It is. I mean, if, Data is so powerful, but it's also incredibly, incredibly time consuming and it makes it difficult sometimes. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. We've been working a lot with the ASCA national model and ramp and what the purposes behind ramp are and, and were from the, from the ASCA stand, standpoint. So we're right there with you. Um, challenging to understand and also challenging, I think sometimes to implement, but the benefits can be really rewarding. It is very overwhelming. You know, I've been in this position for 20 years and when I went through, it was something that was just starting. So to grasp the entire ASCA model and comprehend it, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very there difficult. with you. Yeah. But you've been persistent. So I think that's good. We, we have made changes. Do we have a long way to go? Absolutely. But we've <laughs> made some good changes. I want to ask you, is there another success or another challenge that you had to face other than COVID in the last year that you wish to share that that maybe was either a, a success you know, overcoming something or just something you're really proud of? Um, one of the things that I have found is in my building, I would call it a success. People are learning more about what, what I do in my job. I don't just sit behind my desk all the time. Um, I've had a lot of support. We implemented a program, a social emotional program, Why Try? And that and the collaboration are two things that I have loved that came out of the Lilly Grant. The Lilly Grant has created a lot of work for me and I am one person taking care of two developmental levels for the counseling needs. Yeah. And that Why yeah. Try program, it is so fun to watch how the, we implemented it sixth through eighth grade in the PE department and those teachers bought into it, which then carried over into them teaching it. So if we can't be there, they go right along and, and do the lesson. So it's not like if I'm, because I'm the only one, if somebody has a crisis, I have to be there. They just go along and, and teach it and have picked up. And it's, it's a great program. That's one thing I really, really have enjoyed. And then when you're sitting working with somebody individually and you ask them, where are you on the roller coaster? And they immediately say it you know they're listening and they're catching on. It's the aha moment. It's been really good. That is phenomenal. I, I love the fact that you got the PE instructors involved. And not only did it help getting extra hands to do the work, it also created more buy-in. Yep, absolutely. Okay, well, I put you on the spot here. So last question is about sustainability. I know everybody's worried about sustainability after the, uh, the, the limits of the grant expire. Can you explain any of the work that you or the corporation is doing in the sustainability department, or is that an ongoing challenge too? It is an ongoing challenge, and especially now, everybody's worried with everybody's drop in enrollment. What's the budget going to be? We have tightened our belts tremendously to try and build what I call a cash flow, a cash balance. Um, I do know that they're supportive in the YTRI program, 
And that's one thing that we will continue. I'm pretty certain of that. Other things are a little sketchy um, and it will all determine the budget. We have something called a family support specialist that's shared between all four of our districts and the money is divided between all four of us. But I worry about that program. She's kind of, she has that social work background. So coordinating services is her thing and she's done a fabulous job and I just worry about will that be sustained because that's she's been a very big help the person in that that department um, you know I worry about what are we going to do with the elementary counseling position will we get that back because it's it's obviously needed so time will tell we'll have to just wait and see yeah sustainability is always one of those tough things not only because you have to sustain it it's usually relying on dollars but if you've started great programs that are relying on the funding and then to see them go, even, even doubly uh, disappointing. So let's hope that yes. doesn't happen. Yes. Gail, thanks so much for your time. I know it's short, but I really appreciate you sharing some of your successes and your challenges. I would imagine there's a few other counselors with this grant or without the grant around the state that are saying, yep, we're right there with you. So hang in there. Good luck with the rest of the school year, as challenging as it is. And uh, thanks for sharing your time again today. All right. Thanks so much, Matt.